Praise be Jesus Christ, and onward with Mary. Dear children, present here today in such considerable numbers at the Sheridan Hotel in Padua, and how many of you are following us, apparently already in great numbers from home, the title of this speech of mine is directed to the Bergoglian Church, which does not mean the Catholic Church. They are two absolutely different and not complementary things. One thing is the Roman Catholic Apostolic Church, even without the Munus. Another thing is Bergoglio's multinational Church of Shame. Let this be clear. It does not matter if the media does not say it. We say it. We say it. The Bergoglio's Church, holding the See of Peter, usurping it, is not the Catholic Church. The Bergoglian Church, without the Munus, without the Munus, this is the title. What do you think they're going to achieve? And I would like to start with the hypocritical lying waltz of those who take turns in the media, in social media, in the pseudo-Catholic blogs, repeating like a mantra that the Pope Emeritus is dead. The funeral of the Pope Emeritus, the Pope Emeritus will be buried. The Pope Emeritus died this way, and he died that way. I feel like I'm witnessing a scene I was used to as a child. When I was little, in the building next door to the one where I grew up on, on the first floor there lived a crazy man named Enzo. All of us children simply called him Enzo Upazzo, that is, Enzo the Madman. He spent his days asking for a cigarette. He lived for that, <clears throat> but he could not say cigarette. And so, the way he had learned to say a cigarette, uh, give me a cigarette, was a little strange. He called it uh, a patatini. When he said a patatini, it meant, I want a cigarette. There, it is a crazy manager that of this false church, of this mendacious world, which talks about Pope Emeritus, there's not been the Pope Emeritus. The Holy Father is dead, not the Pope Emeritus. The Pope is dead. And whoever talks about Pope Emeritus is a patatini, a madman. He is Enzo Pazzo. My dear ones, what would you like? This is uh, Satan's time. It is the time of general madness. It is the time of lies. It is the time of the apostasy of the faith. Need I say more? It is the time of apostasy from truth and reason. Jesus Christ in Luke's Gospel... In chapter 6, verses 39 and following, said as follows, Can one blind man lead another blind man? Will they not both fall into a ditch? A disciple is no more than his master. But each one who is well prepared will be like his master. My little ones of the little Catholic remnant, we are ostracized. We are pointed out as sectarians. But certainly it is much more distressing to witness the scene of those who go after Satan's Pope. Jorge Mario Bergoglio, the blind leading other blind people, and risking eternal damnation, and they write that we are finished, that Don Minutella is, uh, is dead. 
the Pope has come to the finish line, that uh, this is the conclusion. They have made me see several posts, several interventions of my beloved enemies, in which they write the Dominutella, the Marian priestly sodality, and the little Catholic remnant, which has thousands and thousands of faithful. And we are seeing it these days here in the north, uh, their end run, and they have come to an end because the Pope has died, as they claim. And they are wrong. They are wrong. Know that we are more motivated than ever because the Pope, now from heaven, is protecting us and interceding for us and accompanying us into the battle. More motivated than ever. And for that matter, the Bergoglio in church, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, the Satanist Freemasons. Where do you think you will go without the munus? You don't have it. It is not that by Benedict XVI dying, they have conquered the munus. He won it. He died as Pope and did not deliver the munus. Long live Pope Benedict. The Petrine Munus of divine foundation and unavailable to the detractors of Christ, to these Iscariots, to these Judases of the Catholic Church, to the enemies of the Logos. No, know this, we are not at the end. Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthians, writes, we are indeed troubled in every side, but certainly not crushed. We are shocked, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. Let the Satanist Masonic Syndicate that has the alliance of the global power elite starting with the media, know that we will resist to the point of martyrdom in this battle, and we'll do so to the end. Per perhaps their overlords believe that after Benedict XVI, taking us by the hand and having led us with great heroism of faith to the springs of the Lamb, do they believe that we will return to the Bergoglioan church? They are wrong. They are dead wrong. Do they believe that after Benedict XVI has guaranteed, has supported, encouraged, and blessed us, Perhaps they believe that we will now bow down before Pashamama, the golden calves of the idolaters Bergoglio. They are wrong. They are dead wrong. And then I repeat the question. The Bergoglian church, you have the seat, you have the throne, you have the grand edifices, but you don't have the munus. What do you think you're getting at? If we wanted to trivialize, we could compare them to Monchichi. Do you remember that? Where do you go if you don't have the munus? Where do you go without the munus? What do you think you will win without the munus? 
It is a losing battle from the very beginning. Who has the monus then? Where is the monus? We now, the little Catholic remnant, are without Benedict XVI. I know that already somewhere there are murmurings to start consultations among Roman Catholics. I've advised those, or those who want to do this, to be at this time in prayer and to await directions from the sodality. It seems to me that I was told, I hope it is not true, that someone said, uh, oh, he was um, speaking of me. Oh, he's simply a pastor. We will act accordingly. It is obvious that these are infiltrators. It is obvious. And we, these two, will, will know how to deal with them, my dear ones. Where is the Munus? We know this. We are now without the Pope because the other one is not the Pope. But if we are without the Pope, dear children, come on, we are without the Pope. They are without Christ, without the Church, without God, without the Spirit, without truth, and without faith. They are a multinational institution of lies. Because Bergoglio has never had the Munus. And we know the reasons why. Did the Mafia of St. Gallen hand him the Munus? Did the Masonic Sanhedrin hand him the Munus? Do you want God the Father to whom we dedicate as a small gesture this year of 2023? to decide to deliver the Munus to the enemies? No, dear children, God will not do that. <clears throat> the Munus is guarded by the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And when God wills, Our Lady will intervene. It will be handed over to a great prelate, the one who is predestined. It is fitting here to quote our Lord's emblematic words to Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for neither flesh nor blood has revealed it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. To you, I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Commenting on this scene, St. Leo, the great Pope who put into Jesus' mouth some words that explain Peter's primacy, the, the munus, his participation in Christ's power and his continuity through time. Saint Leo the Great says, Just as my Father revealed to you my divinity, equally I now make known to you your, your dignity. You are Peter, I who am the inviolable stone, the cornerstone who made the two peoples one people, I who am the foundation out of which no one can build. I say to you, Peter, who are also a stone, for you will be strengthened by my power to such an extent that what belongs to me by its own power will be common to both throw your participation with me. On this stone I will build my church and the power of hell will not destroy it. The enemies are warned. It means that love for the Pope 
is a fundamental characteristic of every Christian. Saint Jose Maria Escriva de Balaguer said it this way, Your greatest love, your highest esteem, your deepest veneration, your most submissive obedience, your greatest affection must be for the Vicar of Christ on earth, for the Pope. We Catholics must think that after God and our Mother, the Blessed Virgin, in the hierarchy of the Holy Father's love and authority is the Pope, of course. And so with these words now that Benedict XVI has passed to eternal life, we say to the false Pope Bergoglio, you will never have our love, our esteem, our veneration and obedience because you are not the Pope. You are not the Pope. Don Minutella shouts it to you. You are not the Pope. You don't have the monus. You don't have our obedience. They comment that Don Minutella has now failed. The lying path of what he says has come to an end. It is truly unbelievable to observe this rabble who care to warn you about Father Minutella, who makes you pray three rosaries a day and takes you to Mary, and they do not realize that they are in communion with the one who says, we will see each other in hell. Shame on them. It is rather peculiar that there are some zealous pastors there warning about how Don Minutella, who makes money and goes on trips, who, who goes out into the world, and they do not notice that they are with one who leads them to pagan idolatry and the most avowed apostasy. Not a single syllable is true of what comes from the Vatican and only the register of falsehood, the dictionary of falsehood, the alphabet of manipulation. The French writer Jorge Bernanos wrote that the scandal lies not in telling the truth but in not telling the whole truth, introducing the lie that leaves it intact on the outside, but corrodes it. So like a cancer, the heart, the bowels. Anyone who continues to stand with Jorge Mario Bergoglio, false Pope Francis, is corroded by the cancer of lies and falsehood. And Leo the Great again writes, Divina est inim autoritas que credemus, divina est doctrina quam sequemor. That is, it is on divine authority that our faith rests. Divine is the doctrine we profess. The Bergoglian Church, without the Munus and without Christ, where do you think you are going? So I say to you, my dear children, of the little Catholic remnant, onward with more strength. I invite you today and in the coming days, do not be sad. I would like to repeat to all of you what Saint Athanasio said to the lost Christians during the season of the Arian apostasy. Do not be afraid. They have the seat. We have the faith.
And I conclude with the last two considerations. The first one is that I'm praying that the death of the Pope and the suspension of the Munus for us who, forced into the vacancy, will push the Cardinals, who still have a modicum of dignity and conscience, as we would like to hope, We pray in these days for the Cardinals who still have a conscience. We want to ask for clarification. We have not invented anything. There is the law of the Church, and according to the law of the Church, Pope Francis not only is not the Pope, but he has never been the Pope. With us is the Blessed Virgin Mary. This work is not Don Minutella's. This work belongs to Our Lady of the Rosary, of Fatima, and her Immaculate Heart. So Our Lady, with folded hands at my right hand, reminds us that we should not worry, we should not be discouraged, because this time of confrontation is also a time of grace. We echo the words of the Gospel tonight for all of us. When at Cana, Mary said, Do whatever Jesus tells you. And finally, I make an appeal to all the little Catholic remnant of Italy. We gathered on December 11, 2022 in Rome. We are about 2,100 people. I had said that that was a final tribute to Benedict XVI. Now you understand why. And it was a moment of grace that has been useful to manage now, this moment, because it invigorated us. It made us understand that we are not alone, as the global elite want us to believe. We must not allow the enemies to disperse us. We must stand together and close ranks. For this, I make an appeal. I have been here in the north, in Padua, since December the 15th. And I will continue to stay here because we are starting the Little Tabor meeting place. However, the Pope has died. So I make an appeal to Milan to Turin, to Genoa, to Florence, Bologna, Naples, Rome, Cagliari, Bari, Ancona, Reggio Calabria, and so on and so forth. I hope it will be accepted and everyone will make the sacrifice, and the sacrifice is this. Next Saturday, January the 7th, we will meet here in Padua to celebrate with the sodality of the Requiem Mass of the little Catholic remnant for Pope Benedict in reparation for the false funeral of the false church. On Saturday, January the 7th, in Padua, contact those of you who will be coming right away. We need to know how many of us there, there will be. Radio Dominus uh, Secretariat for the North Italy region. Please contact Sarah on Saturday, January 7th at 3.30 p.m. Forward with God. Forward with the true faith. Forward with the gospel. Forward. The throne will be set free. Catholic people, God will give you the victory you deserve. So, forward more than ever, forward with Mary.
Thank you all. Forward with Mother Mary. Here, now a quick farewell, because I need to go. Thank you.